Well, to artist recovery from Weaver, John C., the diary of the griever named John Weaver over in Roseman, California. It's still the 26th of May, 2023. Time index right now is 11.20 in the morning, Pacific Standard Time. Dude, YouTube and Google do not like me. I had talked about some strong stuff that the Zeros and ones have a parameter that I cannot cross into. Anything talking about threatening of violence or even what I used to be like a long time ago and trying to talk about it by recovery, certain stories I'm not able to talk about because they are that intense and I can't broadcast it, so... Suffice it to say that uh, the things I've done and almost came close to doing of hitting my own damn mark and the start of sobriety, let's just say that I would be banned from social media for life. I've been through a hell of a lot. And the rest of the stuff, I mean, I could, I could store into a flash drive with no problem, but what it comes down for... Talking about it in meeting halls, no problem at all. It's just social media has these programmable limits out there that we can't cross into. Suffice it to say that the jobs I've had the last couple of times, the last 10 to 15 years, had really put me over the edge. But they are only part of it, only the symptoms of it. If I could send you the videos directly on that, that's one thing. But I can't even process them through YouTube. And they're that long. Yeah, I've been through my own fair share of it. We were talking about also street uh, takeovers. we got too many of them out here in the Southland as well. Even with a few cop cars being torn apart left and right by the hoodlums. Uh, as for politics right now, well, I'll talk about politics a little bit later when I get a chance. I really wanted to get into the recovery talk. I really wanted to tell you about what was going on, why I am the way I am. And my videos also tell people about how I got into the grieving and mourning situation. I mean, when you've been through this before, it changes a person, especially when you're four years old. Open heart surgery, crack open the chest, die three times, get kicked out three times because you're supposed to be alive here changing that level a lot. I didn't even realize that I myself had been changing things left and right in God's terms. So I hire power at work. And when I was at my job that got me into the program, I almost, let's just say that I would have been changing more lives the wrong way. And things you don't talk about on YouTube or Google is implementations, the intentions, the feelings, the thoughts of it. Apparently the zeros and ones don't like it. And my actions would have been too graphic. But I'll tell you one thing, even doing the videos was cathartic. Yes, I still needed to get that I needed to get that resolution going on. I needed to feel like I was okay. Talking about the stories of other things are one thing. But what I needed to talk about my own sobriety, I really needed to talk about that to another person. So maybe one of these here millenniums. But as long as I got on record. But I can't get it on YouTube. Not even under unlisted. It won't let me do it. Such things are needed in, me in meeting halls. So I know what it's like. Struggling with sobriety all this time has been hard enough as it is. Getting to that point. I can tell you one thing, being in the meeting halls with my brother when he was getting uh, clean and sober since 85, I was being a pain in the ass to a hell of a lot of people. And uh, they wanted to kill me. <laughs> Oh, man, they wanted to have strong words and strong actions sometimes. David, we know this guy. He's there. 
We want to help him, but we want to beat the living daylights out of him to get the story down his throat. You know, we need him to understand what recovery is all about, but he won't let us help you. What do we do with him? Oh, let me deal with him. He's my brother. Call center from hell. Several years. Oh, things at home happening. Things at a job killing me at that point over there, man. I thought I was going to be joining that rank. Those actions. The stories that we would hear concerning about um, people having conniption fits and doing certain actions that would put them on the news as the most evil, vile, rotten, sick, sorry son of a sea dogs out there. I was going to join them. I was lucky enough man, that I did have it. That uh, my higher power was looking out for me. Otherwise, with the implements, I'd be part of the news stories. And then completely forgotten. But, you know what happens when a small pebble would make such ripples in a pond? I'm Mount Rushmore into the damn pond. I can make a chuckle over the damn thing because of what the system doesn't want me to put out there. So I have to lighten it up a little bit. <laughs> oh, good Lord, I can make stories on this one here. I mean, I could do it. I could really I could really talk my storm on this one here. So I'll have to find different ways of talking about it anyway, eventually. But just short and sweet on this one, I guess. Well, let's just say it. If I did... What my what Mr. Hyde wanted me to do at this point over here, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I'd be either part of an obituary or I'd be in a jail system or both. Uh October tenth, two thousand six. I joined the ranks. And without those guys trying to keep my ass together and alive, without them, I wouldn't be here. And at times, I really wish I wasn't back to a damn meeting, but we can't get over to them in, in Roseman. We just don't. Transportation sucks, and the rest of the meetings are out in Palmdale and Lancaster's, and if there are any few meetings out here, it's still late at night, and I ain't got the transportation to them. I mean, I hate getting landlocked, I swear. Drives me nuts. I'm grateful my brother was in the program. I'm grateful my brother tried as best as he could to keep me alive. And to keep the other guys off my ass. Especially when I needed to get a good kicking in it. My mother went to the program first. But well before my brother got into it. So we started knowing people in the program. And it became almost like family. And like family members, they also die off. Or move off. And the ones who died off, man, they were really close to us. They're like hell. I talk about that in my grieving pages a lot. But I hadn't talked to more about my damn recovery and how step by step it was. The system won't let me. Yeah, that bad. When the zeros and ones don't even allow me to do it. Shit. That's a problem. I can cuss and curse like crazy. But it won't let me do it. So let's just say a rebel hellion who is going to be putting myself on an ACDC soundtrack and following that particular tune I went in the opposite direction, thank God. Because I wouldn't be here, pal. I wouldn't be here. The job I had to last damn it killed me as well. Management and competence company that didn't care. And it's lucky enough a higher power was trying to keep me alive. 
However, PTSD affects me a great deal. And there's still a hell of a lot of resentment I'm still trying to work on. I can't go into box stores to shop. Box stores was the same techno same terminology used for one particular company I was had that damn near killed me. I can do the online shopping, no problem. But going into a store like that? Mm -mm. No. That's a lot of damage right there. And working for retail again? Mm-mm. No way. Even in office work. I'm basically sidelined permanently, physically and mentally. I've got a liquor store about seven or 800 yards away I walk to. I get supplies. They also have plenty of stuff that would put me out again and make Mr. Hyde come to life. But I'm most, mostly interested in the grocery side anyway. And they know I'm recovering. They knew my brother was recovering. We never used the terminology of being recovered. We just used the terminology of being recovering. When you take your final breath, that's when you're recovered. But I'm alive today. I'm grateful today. I'm trying to be that way, even though I'm one screwed up human being right now. I'm grateful for my life right now as it is. But I can tell you, Art, or I'm sorry, Daryl, saw that name on your page. So I assume your name is Daryl. Or do I still call you artist? One of those two. You're going to have to tell me which one. So I'll call you Daryl. But you're going to have to tell me on your videos on this one. Okay, pal? Yeah, you got permission to put my stuff out there if you need to. I'm giving it to you. The diary of the graver named John Weaver bestows upon a copyright and everything else upon artists in recovery to tell the to tell the story of a fellow alcoholic who walks the path and also who is dealing with the grieving and death and mourning and everything else. So throw it out there, pal. We gotta share our stories. We gotta share our stories in recovery. We gotta share our experience, strengths, and hope with each other, and with everybody else. I've been doing mine as a lifeboat for my memories and myself these days, but it seems like some people are actually watching it and trying to understand what, since I'm going through it, what they're going to be going through it. I mean, grief and mourning is individual, unique, but it's still the same damn thing. We're still going through this process. It's just tailor-made into our genetics, apparently. The genetics of our souls. Our own zeros and ones we got to satisfy. I'm grateful for recovery. I'm grateful for being alive. I'm not grateful for having a bug war dealing with it. Cockroaches and stuff. I've been dealing with these sons of bitches for six years. Uh, not you know, six years, but six, uh, six months of constant guy coming in every Monday and spraying a damn place. We just haven't got the damn guys out. The problem, Art... <sighs> Daryl, God, what the hell do I call you, dude? All right, dude. <laughs> In the apartment complex we got, we were pushing these guys from one unit to another unit to another unit, right in between these freaking walls. They're embedded. Okay, get rid of these lawyers, sorry, the sons of bitches here. Oh, can't get rid of these bastards for anything, I'll tell you. It just drives me nuts. And I tell you something, I just, even if I happen to do the videos that I've done, even if I happen to share them with someone, it's going to be considered a flag out there. 
it's going to be considered a flag because I would be considered a, a potential of sorts. Yeah, my hide was... My hide was dangerous. And it came damn close of putting it into a roster of our own undesirables in the prison system. Or, as I said before, in the obituaries. One way or another. I would have broken Ma's heart and I would have destroyed my brother's sobriety. I didn't even realize that until, until I was talking about my story again and then it finally, I guess it finally dawned on me. The things I had to go through my life, maybe they were or were not faded. Despite the fact I think I was still following the free, you know, freedom of choice, freedom of thought, free to live. Free will. But even in the pro even in the prospect and the, and the idea of free will, we are still fated. So we got these damn strings on us that the uh, sisters of fate would cut with the scissors, and therefore Pinocchio goes. Ah! You'd have been there before. Scared the hell of me as an age four years old. I didn't know how to live. I didn't know how to exist. I had to do a lot of videos and audios on this damn thing, and I'm still trying to work through it. Damn shit. How to relate with people. How to relate with myself. How do you relate with your higher power at this point over here when you got this, this resentment towards him? This lack of understanding. As a four-year-old supposed to understand... The great cosmic situation in front. It's not until I was doing that, those tapings that I wanted to send to you about it. I wanted to post to let people know what the hell was going on. I was getting a realization at this one here. I was getting a realization that even a pebble striking the pond has a hell of a detrimental effect. As much as throwing Mount Rushmore into the damn pond. And I see it. I feel it. I'm aware of it now. I still grieve, I still mourn, I still go through the process, I get triggered. I have to go through the process. That's okay. I have to go through the process, I have to go through the downtime. The depression that puts me in through a lot of stuff that I don't even like to feel or go through. But I'm doing it now. At this moment, I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling alive. I'm feeling aware. But the one things I've missed... Since losing family, is how much I love my family and how much I missed hugs from them and me giving hugs to them. Besides David and Ma, there's a hell of a lot of family and friends out there who passed away that I won't see again in this lifetime. And I miss giving those hugs to them. Growing up as a kid, I felt that was my job in life. Bear hugs. I liked bear hugs. I like giving them because in a turn, I feel the love coming back. You get deprived from them for a long while. You, you really get the feel. You really get the feel the negative effects on this one. And then the thoughts tell you how worthless and ugly you are as a human being and to everybody else. You're no damn good to anybody who wants to hug a son of a bitch like you. 
You're an ugly bastard. You're a fat bastard. You're a fat, ugly bastard. You're a full and idiot. Hugs for me were the physical reminders of people actually giving a damn. Actually caring about me. And I would care back. I guess in a way I needed to tell my story about what the hell happened to me a long while ago because I guess maybe in a way I was telling God what was going on and God was trying to tell me something that I needed to hear. Realizations that I'm not alone. That I do have people listening and caring. And the way if I could take off right off with that, I would. And I can. And I should. Despite the fact it may look like sometimes the day is hard as hell. It's still a good day. It's still a good day. I feel okay right now. I guess in a long while, I feel okay. But I guess that's more important to talk about anyway. I've been through my own rocky road of hell. I mean, I heard a hell of a lot of people out there are just trying to tell me what's going on. I didn't want to listen. I didn't want to hear what they wanted to say, what they were trying to tell me. I thought I knew better. My own pride, my own damn ego was getting in the way of everything. My, my damn disease was about to kill me in any which way, shape, or loose. You know, cliches, cliches, cliches. We're at about the same age, pal. Artists in recovery were the same age bracket. We chewed the same age dirt. Different experiences, different coastlines, but we chewed the same history, didn't we? Generically. We've seen our fair share. That's why I still need to reach out to people in a program like this. I do need the help. I can't do this shit alone. That's why I have to have... I have to talk to people about this. I have to talk to myself about this. I have to talk to God about this one. Because if I can't, then I know I'm screwed. I miss the support. My mother, my brother, my life, my world, my support. They're gone. I deal, I function, I struggle. That's what I do. So, Art and Recovery, Daryl, if your name is that, we gotta talk, pal. We can talk shop, we can talk recovery. We could talk about how to deal with our own individual grieving and mourning processes. Or we could talk about life in general. We should talk. <laughs>